Hey, this is Wesley with Millwright CNC. Uh, today we're going to start a new project. We're going to be making this end table, this stool on Vetric and using the Car King 2. Uh, to start, we're going to start a new project. We're going to have a 35 by 35 by 3 quarter inch work area just to give us enough room to actually make the piece. Uh, the end table is going to be 17 inches high, 16 inches across uh, the tabletop, and 17 inches at the base. So let's get started. We're going to make a square that is 16 inches wide by 17 inches tall. Have that pop right in the middle there. Now we're going to make some uh, squares to give our tabletop the features to build the tenons at the top. So we're going to get one that is three quarters inches high. Then we are going to get a couple that are one inch uh, wide. Going to get two of those. And then we're going to get another square that is 2.75 inches wide. Now we're going to put all these in the correct position. This one is going to be at the top of this square. Then we're going to grab this one, put it at the top of the square too. Then we're going to grab each of these, put it on each end there. That's our tenons that are going to go through the tabletop. Now the base is wider than the uh, top of the table. Just give it a little bit uh, firmer footing. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a 17 by 17 inch square. All right. We're going to grab our line create tool. We're going to come here right at that intersection. And we're going to go to the opposite end of the 17 by 17 square. We're going to do that at both of them. That's going to give us the correct angle for our tabletop to our legs. There. Now we are going to get our trimming tool. Get rid of everything we do not need. Keep your finger on control Z to fix your mistakes. There. Now what we're going to do is create an off offset for this uh, center portion here. So we have an inward offset of three inches just at the top portion here. All right, and now we're going to choose the bottom portion, and we are going to do a two inch offset the other way. Get rid of this, and then we're going to two inch offset here and here both. Didn't need to do both. Oh well. Just delete that. Delete that. We're going to get our line tool out and extend these over. Alright. Now we're going to do some more trimming. Get rid of all these lines we don't need. And make our tenons that are going to go through the tabletop. Keep your finger on control Z to fix your mistakes.
All right. When the wrong thing keeps on getting cut, I like to do a line just to interrupt the flow. And it usually lets you cut the right thing. There we go. Oh. Need another line. And we can cut it. There we go. Alright. Now we're going to have to make this one piece. So we'll fill this in. There we go. And we have some lines from the squares that we cut. We'll select those and delete them. Just a little cleanup. Oh, I'm gonna have to connect these. All right. Let's see what we got. All right. That's one piece. We'll need to connect this. All right, and that is one piece. All right, let's check for any open vectors. No open vectors, we are good to go. Now we're gonna add, we're gonna round these features off a little bit. Normal, we're gonna get a three inch one at the top here. Two inch at the bottom and one inch on the corners now we were also going to have to add some t-bone fillets to the uh, to the tenons half the half the uh, the radius of the end mill that we're using so we'll just put those here there we go. Now there's one more feature we need. These legs are going to join over each other. So we need to add a cutout of 0.75 inches wide and one inch high. We'll create that. This one is going to go through the tabletop first. So it will need it on the bottom. There we go. And just trim that. All right, giving me some trouble here. We'll add our lines just to break that up. And there we go. Still one piece. And we'll add our fillet there. All right, that is our solid leg. We will copy that, move it out of the way. Now we will make our split leg. To do that, we will need another square. Make it 0.75, but three inches long. And then we'll make another one two inches long. There we go. We'll move this one in relation to this and put it at the very top. Now we will do some trimming and we'll use some of our lines just to break this up. Need some more down here at the bottom. All right. Now this one, in relation to this one, will go at the bottom. We need to flip those cutouts.
add these to the sides we need a talk ball so the legs fit together nicely all right let's check for any open vectors that is our second leg done let's move it out of the way now we are going to work on the tabletop we need a 16 inch uh, diameter so we'll create that and now we need some more of our squares with 0.75 height will be one inch we'll create two of those then we need to flip them one inch wide height 0.75 we'll create two of those and then we will we'll need one that is 2.75 which is an inch on both sides plus the thickness of the sh of the stock so two inches and 0.75 all right create two of those all right we'll zoom in a little bit this one needs to be moved in relation to the circle that's going to go to the top this one is going to go to the bottom this one is going to go to the left and this one is going to go to the right this one we are going to rotate 90 degrees and then we need to get our trimming tool just trim the end of the square away All right, and then remove these overlapping lines. All right, now we need to add our fillet to each of these ends. Just to allow the stock to marry together with the roundness of the end mill has all right and that's looking a little plain so we're going to add some decoration here i'm going to select the outside the inside and we're going to do some offsets inward just an inch at a time all right that's looking pretty good now it's not going to carve in these lines as they are so we will do another offset 0.01 no 0.1 alright now we are going to group all these lines together so that we can do a v-carve operation Right. group then we are going to group this and this for our profile operation we're also going to group this and this all right check for open vectors again now we are going to change our work area here to 17 by 17 the carb king has a 17.25 by 17.25 work area all right now let's choose this for our v carve operation we're using a 60 degree v bit we're going 0.15 in these lines are only 0.1 apart so it'll only cut to 0.1 in between them no problem all right, let's preview that. It's looking pretty good. Go back to our 2D view, select the edges for the profile toolpaths. We're using a quarter inch end mill. We need to edit these passes down to five passes. We're gonna add some tabs just to the outside and then to the center portion to keep that from bouncing around and messing up our end mill calculate 
screen view. All right, looking pretty good. Now, we are going to have to move our tabletop out of the way to get our leg operations. So we'll move that, switch back over here. Back to our manufacturing side and profile toolpath. Again, we got to drop this down to five passes, quarter inch end mill, add some tabs to it, two on the outside, two on the inside. All right, calculate. Mm, that's the wrong one. So, all right. That's looking good. We have to move it out of the way to get our last leg in. Make sure it's in the middle here. Then profile toolpath. Again, we need to change this to five. Get some more tabs in. Then calculate. All right, looking good. Our stock on the Carve King is going to be 20 inches by 20 inches, so we'll have plenty of space to hold the legs and the tabletop down. All right, the only thing we have to do now is rename these so we know which ones we're going to be doing. This is going to be Solid leg, one fourth end mill. This one is going to be split leg, one fourth end mill. And this one's going to be top, one fourth end mill. And there's only one V carve operation, so I know which one that's going to be. Then we Save either gerbil millimeters or inches, select the toolpath we want to save, and then save it. Only thing we have to do now is to cut it and see how it turns out. We are cutting 20 by 20 MDF, 3 quarters inch thick. These are some drops that we've had from production that we are reusing. We are using a quarter inch end mill, two flute. I'm cutting about 140 inches a minute. We gotta be inhaled by some slotted clamps, steel, using the T track of the Carp King 2. The Carp King 2 has a work area of 17.25 by 17.25 which means that we were on the very extreme of the range of the Carp King 2 I had to disconnect the homing switches to allow the uh, enough travel to cut out these legs tabletops not so bad that's only 16 by 16 16 inch diameter so plenty of room on that but the legs took up more space so I had to disconnect the home switches. We're brushing against the X one right there at the leg and we're brushing against the Y at the back of travel. If I left them on, we would have bumped them for sure and I would have had an error and my cut would have been interrupted. This leg is the solid leg it will go on first and you'll have to be that into the tabletop before you do the split leg here we are starting the cut of the split leg it will go on second you will uh, right there that split will go over the bottom of the leg of the solid leg 
and the top portion will go in between the top of the split leg as well. You'll have to bead it in second to fully assemble the table. Now those tenons at the top are a tight fit. You will need to do some sanding to make sure the fit uh, is tight without causing uh, any splintering, any breakage. Um, but you don't want to go overboard. At the beginning, you want to start small, test the fit, each leg individually just make sure that it'll go into the slot as it needs to uh, slow and steady does it now this is just a friendly reminder Always check the settings on your bits before you start cutting. The spacing in between the lines that I was using to do the V-carve were only 0.1 inches apart, but my settings on my 6 degree V-bit were off, and so now it's taking multiple passes to cut what should have been a single pass to cut. So always check your settings, or you'll be sitting here like I was, watching the slowest carve ever. But we will only show portions of it to keep uh, y'all from sitting here for 20 minutes like I was. When assembling this, I used a dead blow mallet to knock the feet in. As I mentioned before, I turned the tabletop over on a padded surface and I knocked the solid leg into the tabletop first and threaded the split leg over it and beat that in. You want to be careful where you hit. I don't hit in the middle span of the leg, that'll cause it to crack. I tapped it in at the uh, the top where the legs brace the table, at near the edges. Um, I had to work in the 
extreme ends of the leg first, uh, either the left or the right side, whichever one you prefer. And then after I got one side in, I gently tapped the center portion in. The first leg I had to do, I had to tap one side in, back it out, then work on the opposite side to get a nice uh, nice fit for both of those and then the middle portion just fell right in so sanding a little bit of patience will get it uh, together nicely We use MDF because it's what we had on hand, but you can, of course, use any type of wood that you prefer. The uh, tenons poking through the tabletop can look very nice if you have separate woods. Or you can even uh, stain them before you put them together to have a nice contrast. This cut would have been much more pleasant if I was able to use the dust shoe to keep all these uh, particulates and, and the dust down and open the door to get some airflow. Uh, but watching a dust shoe scoot around the table isn't good entertainment, so I took it off so y'all could see better. Let's see that finished product. Looking pretty good. Well, I appreciate y'all watching.